Thank you very much, Chairman Rangel. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. I was about ready to adopt a statement of Jerry Lewis, but of course that would have been when I was in the minority, and I would have been far more sympathetic uh, to your p position today. Uh, having said this, it's a great honor to be uh, sitting at this table, especially with you, Mr. Chairman. You, your country called on you during the war. You came through. You were a hero then, and now history is going to record that our country has uh, serious problems, and once again, we'd be guided by your leadership. Uh, it has been difficult uh, because of the nature of the crisis, and we've had to do things in a way that is not exactly regular order. And I want to thank Mr. Camp, the ranking member, for making a very difficult process one that was at least understood that this is what we uh, had to do. I also want to thank the chairman of the Finance Committee and our wonderful staffs who made life easier for us so when we disagreed, we knew the depth of the disagreement and that never interfered with our ability to erode those, erase those uh, the differences. Um, I, I don't fully understand uh, what the $700 billion is going to do for the banks and fiscal institutions. Uh, but one thing I do know is that what we are doing today uh, for the people throughout the United States that have lost their jobs, lost their hope, lost their dignity, it's a painful thing, and not just for the communities that are affected, but for our great country. I cannot think of any symbol other than our flag that's more important than the hopes and dreams of working middle class people. And uh, to see them cry is a painful thing, and to appear to be helpless and not being able to do anything because of partisanship or whatever is something that I, I find very awkward. I'm not saying this is going to work, but as Chairman Barkas has said, at least we all feel as Americans and as legislators that we're trying to do something. And uh, you don't have to be an economist to know that when people don't have the money to put food on the table, keep their kids in school, pay the rent, pay the mortgages, they lose a lot more than just their families and dignity. And if we can find some way to increase their disposable income, that means that these are the people in America that don't have options. They, they have to buy in order to live. That means that we have small business people that are able to sell. And uh, this <coughs> bill that is so well crafted provides assistance for our small business people, uh, provides health care for those people who have been adversely affected, provides education so that we can pick up the pieces as a wounded country and come out, perhaps with God's will, way ahead in technology and strong economically than we've ever been. And for the 95% of the American people that will receive tax cuts, it's not just something that makes us feel good as politicians. We're talking about four, five hundred dollars thousand dollars eight hundred dollars we're talking about people who need this money and will spend this money and therefore there's just no question that it'll be some assistance to help allow people to continue uh, to have people working i think a lot of good can come out of this crisis in terms of alternatives to fossil fuels better education a lot of things that we should have been doing before we reach this fiscal crisis but I feel very comfortable that at the end of the day that we all should feel proud that we at least had an opportunity to change the direction which our great country is going. And uh, I want to let the leader know that uh, keeping us together, uh, Mr. Leader, has not been an easy job, but uh, I think you've done a great job in keeping the House and the Senate together, and I just want to publicly uh, thank you, uh, Leader Reed, for, for the contribution you made, and I thank you. Mr. Chairman. I thank you very much, sir.